The world of technology is growing all around us, evolving at a rate faster than we know. What lies below is a labyrinth of processing power, algorithms, sensors, machine learning, and data analytics. Listening, seeing, hearing, and sensing are every word in action. The sheer level of human surveillance and data monitoring is beyond surreal, as if a virtual big brother from George Orwell's 1984 novel or the very brains and core of the Matrix movie have been brought to life. Artificial intelligence lives and breathes in almost every corner of our society, beginning with the technology and gadgets we have all around us, such as our smartphones, personal assistants, cars, to automated manufacturing, healthcare, the military, and so much more. But who creates the AI? And how do they go about it? Where is it all leading? These were all questions we wanted answered. I see AI is this portal, this interface to data and to this knowledge of the world. My research is in trying to build robots that can do the same types of things that we can do as humans. Rather than trying to solve an academic or toy problem, I love to jump into real data sets. And real data sets have noise, bias of how we got the data, and all sorts of messiness involved with them. But it's those features that we can use and understand to make progress on problems. There's something about having access to endless possibilities. I remember very distinctively talking to my first AI engineer, having a conversation with him about the difficulty to collect data and how limited the algorithm would be in the nearest future. How much the recommendation will need to be double-checked, triple-checked. And suddenly it was like, oh, that's not magical at all, actually. A unique creativity is what makes us successful in our own career. So the idea here is to actually train the machines to think and to give us results in a similar fashion. In order to build great software, you need to back it up with great hardware. Autonomous retail, basically, to put it in short, is similar to autonomous driving, right? You want a car to drive itself. Autonomous retail is you want a retail store to be operating by itself without people in it. And that's the vision that we're building towards for the future. Built on a simple matrix of binary code, noughts and zeros, AI isn't actually a physical device you can see and touch. It's code inside a software application. Pioneered by software engineers, data scientists, technology innovators and entrepreneurs, many who had their inspiration from the very books, movies and television that predicted their being. My motivation was from the movie Matrix. It got me thinking about something uh, really interesting. The difference between a sentient human being versus an intelligent machine was totally diminished in that movie. That actually helped me a lot in kind of uh, shaping my career more towards the applications of artificial intelligence. Uh, we are not there right now, but some of the things which we do and we are working on are taking us to the level we saw in Matrix and similar movies likewise, the sci-fi movies in artificial intelligence and humanoids and so on. I am a artificial intelligence language systems researcher, which means that I help build natural language processing systems 
for problems of national security. I went to U Chicago for undergrad where I studied computer science with a specialization in human computer interaction, an appreciation and affinity towards technology and just innovation and building something new, creating something from nothing essentially, um, has always kind of been something that drove me. I've been involved in artificial intelligence research since I was in high school. I mean, I've been building things and creating things since I was much younger. That was always my thing, is just putting things together. I learned computing as I grew up, and in college I became a computer engineer where I could understand how the code that I typed moved the electrons around the chips and the architectures. I focused on high-performance computing and parallel processing where we could use many computers at once and harness that power to solve a single problem. And for my dissertation, I programmed several supercomputers to solve discrete math problems. These are the types of problems such as optimization or understanding graph analytics or even sorting numbers I used to work for many years for uh, brokerage firms. I worked for Goldman Sachs and for other brokerage firms developing algorithmic trading software. And uh, about five years ago, um, I wanted to build something with uh, facial recognition. I developed a little application to let salespeople in, uh, in a retail store recognize the customers that were walking in the door. My very first experience with computers was in elementary school, actually. Uh, and it was right at a time where everyone started seeing the power uh, of learning about computers at a very young age. I started participating in hackathons. Uh, and these are these kind of, you know, 24 hour, 48 hour sessions where you come together with a group of students that you may or may not know, and you're there to really build something from nothing. And I think that is where the bug of technology really caught me. I used to work for IBM Research for about 10 years after my PhD from the University of Illinois. At IBM, uh, one of the common themes that I kept seeing across different enterprises was that uh, people were having difficulty in getting access to the data. I remember watching Indian movies and thinking, oh, AI is like magical. It's this thing that does everything faster, smarter, better than human beings. And you just press a button and then somehow, poof, it just happened. With such a plethora of companies developing AI technology, how do we know where it will lead us and what they've achieved so far? These days in AI, we can do a number of things very well, like playing Go, recognizing cats on the internet, but some basic skills like, for instance, just being able to pick up your cup of coffee and washing it and putting it away, we still don't have a machine that does that for us. We're still required to do that ourselves. Everything from personalized medicine to understanding how to have better margins in our businesses, and even understanding how to protect nations against cyber attack and to give attribution to attacks when they occur. All of these require understanding the nuances of our data. That thinking has really led us into some new domains, some new algorithms that move us beyond machine learning and traditional AI. We're able to incorporate information and to grow an understanding of what we're looking at as the data unfolds before us. The more data, the bigger the computer and processing power, you need to analyze it all. Machines are getting faster and humans are getting smarter. But learning how to read and use the collected data is key. We look at whichever data sources have the most um, impactful influence on the proximate cause of what we're looking at. And then we use that as an anchor to look at that as the most predictive and then time shift 
all of the other uh, data streams. And we're able to dynamically in real time identify how much of a time lag there is typically between the da different data sources and amplify the predictive ones and dampen the non-predictive ones or the lagging ones. And by doing so, we're able to make a more predictive score. What generated this? What can this generate? And then what can be done with the product of what it's generating, the data? then essentially what technology is, is it's a way to interface with that mentality, but with all of the data in the world. If somebody says something and they have certain credentials, people tend to believe them, but that gets dangerous too, because right now, um, at least before we have decentralized technology, more prominent, um, there's no way to really track the sources of data, right? Like you need journalists to fact check all of this. And even that, there are people writing these. In the race to create impactful AI, the question is whether companies will be using it for the good of humankind or for their own benefit. If you can profile based off of text, like say if you have a block of text or a tweet and you can predict somebody's age or their gender, this or that, or their political alignment, or what products they're most likely to buy. Using that same type of data that allows you to connect them with the advertisements you think would be best suited to what they want, you can also expose them to new perspectives that will expand their understanding of the world and the information that they consider. AI, necessarily, is able to process a tremendous amount of data far more than the human mind. If you think of the GPT-3, the language model that came out of OpenAI um, most recently, it was trained on 175 billion parameters. It's a very complicated, complex, you know, system. You have, you know, tens, hundreds of billions of neurons. They're all interacting in various ways. How can you even fathom or try to comprehend their function and their, and how they operate? So you start at, you know, at the small level. It's almost like if someone gave you a computer, you would have to try to first, and I teach, you know, computer engineering. You know, first you have to understand transistors, how they work. So, you know, how neurons work, right? What are their signal pathways, how they work electrically, how they work chemically. Then you try to build up and say, well, if I have a collection of these things, do I have a circuit? What can I do with that? And then you talk about going from circuits to larger kind of systems, right? How do these different circuits interact? And this is where it gets really complicated, but this is what makes research fun. It's a mystery and uh, we try to use various tools, mathematical tools, you know, experimental measurements, analyses, um, to try to tease apart what's important to the function, what's imp not important to its operation, and how to think about, you know, what makes it really tick. And that's really the excitement of the research in this area. The path ahead is an unknown space, and one we're all trying to figure out as we go along. With the changing social and economic status, AI entrepreneurs need to be very agile and innovative. So COVID has really accelerated the need for contactless checkout in the physical space. So I remember reading a stat out there that more than 20% of the cashiers have tested positive for COVID. And cashiers interact with shoppers, hundreds and hundreds of them on a daily basis. So, what our technology wants to bring to this market is to not only offer safety for the shoppers, but also safety for the cashiers who are interacting with so many people on a daily basis. And customers, on the other hand, they also have a higher requirement for contactless shopping. Uh, they want to make sure that the space that they're shopping in is safe, sanitized, but also at the same time, they're able to minimize human contact and maintain their social distancing protocol. And our technology has really facilitated this. The main thing that I'm really passionate about is that amazing mix of science and practicality, uh, which means that you do a great research, uh, and, and most of us are amazing scientists here, and I met some amazing people, uh, but you always want to see that impact in the world, and there needs to be a practicality to have that impact. So I'm really interested in the great merging of the two of them particularly in the field that I did it for many, many years, it was battery technologies, uh, renewable energies. That was the field that I really liked. 
But about three years ago, I realized, you know what? Those same skills are applicable to any type of company. And particularly now at Cornell Tech, uh, I'm really interested in doing that for digital technologies. Through the course of working on these grand challenges, what I've learned is that the data is often central and most important. The data talks to us. We have to listen to it. We have to understand and then figure out what are the right programs, what are the right architectures, computers, and processing systems that we need to bring together to let the data speak, to let us get insights, and to do that problem solving to really improve the grand challenges that we face. But with data, what I would love to get to is a state where we have continuous prediction of being able to have a better life rather than just looking in the past, but to look towards the future, to understand and make strategic predictions and influence everything that we do as we go about our lives. AI pioneers often look to the human body and brain for inspiration. But we as humans still don't know enough about ourselves and our abilities. So there is a huge unknown of what can be possible and how we can achieve it. I got interested in, in, on the artificial intelligence side of things. Can we actually model how the brain works um, and how can we build artificial brains? And how can we make robots that can use these brains? And that's, that's now what my research area is all about. If you're going to shake someone's hand, how do you know where to meet their hand in space? Really, the way that our mind works is our unconscious mind stores all this biomechanical data that we don't need to consciously process, right? Like, while you're walking, you're not thinking about how to move every muscle in your body. Your brain does that for you without you needing to focus on it. And so that's how we know how to meet people's hands in space. But what if we take away those cues beforehand that enable us to predict this unconsciously. I think uh, to fully understand, you know, how we think and how the brain works is, is still a grand mystery. We've only gotten, you know, just a basic understanding of some of the, the uh, small properties of it. But we really don't understand, you know, what makes you or I tick, what gives us emotions, what makes us, you know, have feelings. You know, these are all the things that we still don't have a good scientific understanding of. So, so this is really the grand challenge, is to understand the brain and to try to learn from that and to you know, maybe make machines that could uh, approach the level of capabilities that we have as humans. Well, I think the, uh, what the lesson, one of the lessons that we've seen in AI currently is that the more data you have about a domain or a, a problem, you can do better with the AI. So this is, you know, things like object recognition or some speech recognition, where you have lots and lots of kind of uh, 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 training data that is nicely labeled by other humans. Then you can train an AI to do that. Any domain where you can get lots and lots of data, then, let, you know, this is where AI is going to be successful. Now, the problem is that when we have domains where we don't have that much data and it's difficult to acquire that data, then we have to think about better methods. And this is where the research is. Such a complex task, and so many individuals, companies, governments, and countries are battling in the race to develop the optimum use for AI, data analytics and processing, and machine learning. We're hoping that as people get more access to interesting data sets that they may not have access to before, the world is more aware of the data that's available, and more self-aware in a sense. People are more aware about their local communities, about the nation, about the world. I think there's a lot of fantasies in people's mind about AI taking over the world tomorrow. And I don't think it's gonna happen tomorrow and I don't think it's gonna happen the day after tomorrow either. 
when I got to understand a little better where we were in terms of uh, R&D, not just the companies I was working at, but in general, the, the engineering world, I was like, okay, there's definitely a lot of potential. I can absolutely see how this is going to have a huge impact on humanity. The jury is still out there whether it's going to be a positive impact or a negative impact, but definitely it's going to have some impact. In a robot, you know, what is it? The, how do we use vision? How do we use tactile sensing? How do we actually control our arms and coordinate them in such a way that we can handle all types of all types of coffee cups very easily, whether they're slippery, whether they're full of hot liquid, whether they're iced coffee, you know, with a, a sweating. Um, you know, how do we understand how to manipulate these objects in such a natural way that right now our robots will drop these things and fall over all the time? So, so this is really, I think, a challenge. Is even a simple task, which is picking up a cup of coffee and serving it well, is something that, you know, from a research perspective, is still unsolved. In the next uh, 20 to 25 years, we shall see more promising humanoids, robots, applications coming up, which will see more similarity with a high degree of uh, precision. But as of now, majority of the teams who are working in, in AI, robotics, and artificial intelligence related applications, they are mostly focused on one, two, or a bunch of applications, and they want to make machines perfect in those, rather than making a complete humanoid or individual who can behave and work like an entire human being, because that's something which we haven't still understood. That's kind of where we started understanding the value and the power is that when we saw all of this unstructured data and we started to put it through more of a structured kind of product and, and, and kind of looking at it with um, a different lens, we were able to see shifts in behavior happen before they became more commonplace. So the thing that you have to look for is what are the best application of these techniques that we call AI uh, and where do they create value? Where I'd like to get to is a state where every person on the planet in every country, in every corner, is able to use data to solve the questions that they face every day. That allows us to better understand ourselves but it also allows us to better build with that knowledge. The future is clearly exciting, but highly complex. And the process of using AI to collect data, learn, evolve, and make our lives better has already begun. But a long and arduous journey lies ahead. Stay tuned to find out where AI is leading us and the challenges we face ahead.